Hi, today I'm going to explain about the frequency distributions and graph. So the objective of learning this chapter are to organize data using frequency distribution to represent data in frequency distribution graphically using histogram, frequency polygon, and ogive, and to represent data using bar graph, Pareto chart, time series graph, and pie chart. As an introduction, to begin any statistical study, we need data. We need data in order to get the frequency distribution, which is the way how we organize the data. So we need to organize the data properly using this frequency distribution before we present our data by using graph or charts. Frequency distribution. There are three types of frequency distributions, which are categorical, group, and ungrouped. Let us see one by one. For categorical frequency distribution, we refer to this example. Let's say we have this data set based on the blood type. So we know that the blood type consists of four types. That means you need to make a class of four. So A, B, O, and A, B. To find the frequency for every class, you need to use tally method so that you can get correct number. By using the frequency, you can also calculate the percentage for every class. So this is the example how we interpret this table of frequency distribution. So we just need to focus on the majority. Next, about the group frequency distribution. This type of frequency distribution is applied for a bigger range of data. Let's say we have this data which represents the record of high temperatures of 50 states. So to construct the group frequency distribution, we can find the number of class by using this formula which is log sample size divided by log 2. But for this example, I use 7 classes then you can get the table like this so the group frequency distribution must consist of the class limits class boundaries frequency and cumulative frequency for the class limits we know that we use seven classes therefore to find the width for every class we need to find the highest minus the lowest divided by the number of classes so we will get the width equals to 5 approximately so meaning that for every class it must be 5 numbers inside this limit for the class boundaries you can obtain based on the class limits plus minus 0 0.5 this is your lower boundary for the class and this is your upper boundary for the class for the lower boundary the lower class limit you minus with 0 0.5 and for upper boundary, upper class limit plus with 0 0.5. And then to get the frequency for each class, you can use the daily method. And then you can also calculate the cumulative frequency. For cumulative frequency, actually all the numbers adding up. So for example, for the first row, the frequency is 2. That means the cumulative is 2 plus 0. But for the second row, if the frequency is 8, the cumulative frequency comes from 2 plus 8. And the next row, if the frequency is 18, the cumulative is 10 plus 18 equals to 28. For ungrouped frequency distribution, we need a smaller range of data. For example, this data represents the number of hours for 30 college students say they sleep at night. So to construct the ungrouped frequency distribution, we need the class limit. So our class limit based on this data are single values. And for class boundaries, we use the formula class limits plus minus 0.5. Therefore, for the class limit, let's say 5, you will get the boundaries 4.5 and 5.5. And then you can count the frequency one by one. Next, I will discuss several common graphs that are used to represent quantitative data. 
such as histogram, frequency polygon, and ogive. So let us see this example form. To construct histogram, we need the class boundaries and frequency. So in this example, I took class boundaries and frequency from example 2. So this will be your histogram based on the table just now. Don't forget the important elements such as the title, the class boundaries on the x-axis and the frequency on the y-axis both with level and then zero. And then this is the way how we interpret our histogram. So we just need to based on the highest bar or you can mention how the data distributed. So to graph the frequency polygon, we need the midpoints. So the midpoints you can obtain based on the class boundaries using the following formula. So the midpoints equals to the low boundary plus upper boundaries divided by 2. So after you obtain all these midpoints based on these boundaries and using the frequency as well, then you can get your frequency polygon. So the point here will be lie on the middle of the histogram. And don't forget the important elements such as the title, the midpoints, the frequency both on the x and y axis with zero. And then for ogive, we need the upper boundaries and the cumulative frequency. Then you will get the ogive like this. And don't forget the important elements such as the title, the upper boundaries on the x, the cumulative frequency on the y, and your zero. In this section, I will discuss other graph or charts such as bar graph, Pareto chart, time series graph, and pie chart. Bar graph is used to represent nominal and ordinal data. So for example, by using this nominal data, we have electronics, dorm decor, clothing, and shoe with the amount of money spent. And to draw the bar graph, it can be horizontal or vertical like this. If you notice, bar graph is actually similar to histogram except bar graph is only applies for nominal data. That means for the y-axis or the x-axis must be the item or the subject, it's not a numerical. You can also build a compound bar graph to compare data for two or more groups as follows. Pareto chart is also used to represent nominal and ordinal data. So let us see this example. So we consider five cities with the average number of hours that a commuter spends in traffic congestion per year. Using this data, the Pareto chart can be drawn like this. The bars are placed side by side and descending in height. So this is the example on how we interpret the Pareto chart. We focus on the highest or the lowest, the longest or the shortest. Time series graph is used to represent interval and ratio data. So normally we use this type of graph to analyze time series data. So we have year and cost for example. So the time series graph based on this data will be like this. So the year on the x-axis and the cost for example will be on the y-axis. And this is the way how we interpret the graph. You can also use compound time series graph to compare data for two or more groups. For example, this graph here. And lastly, pie chart. Pie chart is used to represent nominal and ordinal data. So we use this data or snack and the number of pounds for each snack food eaten during the Super Bowl. So to create the pie chart, we need to find the percentage for every section. So make sure the total percentage is equal to 100%.
So that's all from me in this video. You can find the link on how to create the graph and chart using Microsoft Excel on the description below. Thank you.